This is a teardown of a D-Link DSS-24 Plus 10100 Fast Ethernet switch. And this is kind of interesting because it has an optional slot for an upgrade, which is for a fiber optic connection. Maybe it's just me, but I've always kind of considered D-Link to be kind of more of a low-end op uh, option compared to like Cisco. So. I didn't expect that this would have something like a fiber optic module that you can install. Oops. And not much to see down the, the hole. It's kind of dark in there. A little card edge connector looks like. And we'll just take a peek on the inside now. Funny thing about these older 10100 switches is most people for their daily use are probably able to get away with this just fine for home use. Even for business use. Really the only time I'm hitting my gigabit network connections is if I'm doing file transfers over the network. Otherwise, I think my internet connection in theory is supposed to be 150 by 50 when I more realistically get 100 by 50. <laughs> Let's see here. A little dusty on the inside. It does have a fan though, so that makes sense. It'd be interesting to see if this fan still spins. Probably a more high power switch than I gave it credit for back in this day though. Oops. Yeah. Still spins smoothly. Let's see how quiet it is. Um yeah, that's fine. We're not gonna move the power supply. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, bearing's starting to go bad. A little, a little noisy. Well, now I'd be a little bit more careful with the uh, shocking bits. Oh well, that's going to stay there. And move that out of the way. Reclaim this. I was feeling adventurous, I would discharge that capacitor, but I'm just going to leave it alone and not touch the power supply board. I would assume there's a bleed down resistor, but I don't know. I don't like finding out. <laughs> I don't have an insulated screwdriver on hand. I'm not going to be able to remove the front display without removing the power supply, but... Whoops! Alright, I took all the screws out. Uh -huh. That's just going to be your standard little LED, row of LEDs, bar graph thing. Here's the main PCB. Not too much on it for components. It's new enough where the majority of it was put into the chips, the main chips. I'm not sure what to expect for these for brand. I guess they're either going to be Broadcom or it's going to be something they designed in house. I don't think, I don't think I'm going to, be able to remove that with this screwdriver. Let's find out. grab a different screwdriver. Well, there's two different ways to go about this. Hopefully, we can just use a flathead screwdriver and pry it off.
I still don't have a wide enough blade. I can also use a pair of side cutters. It's kind of a lever, leverage point. Make it so you don't slide out. Yep, Broadcom chips. Seems like that's what you see in most switches. Of course, camera doesn't want to focus. There we go. It's a BCM 5318KQM chip. And I'm guessing it's eight ports per chip since there's three chips. The only reason to believe these are going to be different. And there's the card slot. So, yeah, I didn't really expect there to be anything too exciting in there, but don't know until you look. So, hopefully that was interesting, and thanks for watching.